Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take hello, that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryant and one Pedro Mateus, and together with you watching us live on Twitch, which seems to be back in one piece, kind of. Our YouTube oh. export thing works again. Sorry about that last week, but I just made it public for everyone to just watch, because, hey, what's the point in doing this if people don't see it? We got a bunch of stuff to talk about this week, but I want everyone know that I'm... Uh, making progress on a little YouTuber special. I got a little red box from Focusrite. And uh, I thought, I, I genuinely thought by now, when I started doing the Interfacing Linux series like two years ago, I also had a thought about this. Like the two people doing like public facing audio stuff for Linux, are like, there's two people doing it. It's me and Unfa. <laughs> 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 yeah. We need more. The, the two non-native English speakers are crushing it. Um, but, yeah, I'm playing around with this, and I'm going to get some benchmark numbers with a new kernel versus what a current kernel would be running. And I dare say I might be teaching people mm -hmm. maths. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the size of this microphone next to the third gen focus, right? There's a uh, little difference, but yeah. I'm bringing that out as like may maybe not the right, the right tool for the job. Anyway. Outside of that, not much. How about you, Jill? I know you uh, were uh, making posts in Discord this morning. You're like, ah. Yeah, very exciting. So it was just, it was so wonderful watching William Shatner or Captain Kirk go to space the final frontier this morning on the Blue Origin rocket. And the oldest person in space at 90. Congratulations, William Shatner. And it was so wonderful hearing his profound poetry about the fragility of our planet when he returned to Earth. It was it was amazing uh, description and experience that he had, and he said it so well, despite being, you know, so shaky and nervous and excited at the same time. He did a great job. Oh, I'm sure he took plenty <laughs> of drugs. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pedro, what have you been putting in your ears? I have been putting things in my ears, I cannot deny. <laughs> yeah. I've been putting the uh, KZ, uh, ZN Pro Xs, which are um, basically the pair of in-ear monitors that uh, the YouTubers seem to agree is like, they're cheap, but they punch well above their weight. And uh, when I first put them on, it's like, where's the bass? It's like, I can hear the high ends. The high ends sound amazing. But uh, where's where's the bass? And, um, and then I realized, wait a second. These are these have the uh, little rubbery things. You got to shove them into your ear canals. It's like, okay. Uh, there's the bass. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just so, yeah, suck them once in. They were, <laughs> yeah, once they were in place, they actually sound very good. That's... Actually, they sound almost as good as uh, this, these AKGs that I have on my head right now. So, um, good job, KZ. No, <laughs> I'd ask job. a very important question. Show me the uh, 3.5 millimeter on the end of that. Oh, 3.5 mil. Right about here. <laughs> right. Now, the reason I ask that, uh, if you have in-ears, or even if I have these studio monitors on and I'm in here um, working on a mix or something like that for multiple hours, I forget I have them on. It's kind of important. Something I always look for in a headphone is to make sure it has a straight. So it pulls out very effectively when I get up and walk off. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be using these in here. These are for when I go outside. These are going to live in the... Uh, laptop bag and the backpack whatever i'm taking with me that's Perfect. where they go mm. <laughs> well i hope you do enjoy them okay linuxy things and uh firefox has a brand new feature out that everyone is super excited we're talking about yeah. firefox suggest um what is it it's a new feature that serves trustworthy guy is a trustworthy guide to a better web finding relevant information and sites to help you accomplish your goals it's on by default. And, uh, okay. <laughs> this, this goes through, you know, just a lot of stuff. It's going to give you suggest suggestions from trusted partners that Mozilla has vetted. And all the this is a very, very long way of saying, we're going to put some ads in the address bar. And it's going to be enabled mm -hmm. by default in Firefox 93. Now, surprisingly, 
or unsurprisingly, I should say, the internet has taken issue with this. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I think a lot of that is coming from the PR speak in this blog at support.mozilla.org. All this is going to be in our show notes after the fact, but it is full metal PR speak. And um, it made me think about, you know, just we talked uh, maybe last month, a couple of weeks ago, what just how far usage statistics the Firefox's market share is in 2021. It was alarmingly small. I think we were all taken aback a little bit of like, wow, Edge is beating out Firefox, and we all come from the time where Firefox was the big one. It was dominant. It was crushing everything. And those people left using Firefox. You know, I kind of feel that, you know, they're the hardcore ones. They're the fateful ones. And they really didn't like the spin of this, the way it was played off. I genuinely think everybody would have been a lot cooler with it if Firefox, that entire blog post, had come out and said, hey, we need some money, yo. There's some ads in the uh, suggestion um, search bar. Cool. I'm like, ah, fine. Honesty. Right. It goes a long way. We can just disable <laughs> yeah. it, and it's not going to be that big of a deal. And yes, to that point, you can disable it. But I do urge everyone, don't make excuses for it. Don't. I mean, it is what it is. And, you know, it takes money to make a product. And that's what mm-hmm. Firefox is, and arguably a very good product. I mean, they've done some very questionable things, you know, getting rid of the, uh, effectively the, hey, we're doing cool stuff for the internet department that kind of got disappeared. And uh, I was sad about that. And I think a lot of people were as well, but you know, when it does come down to operational cost for the, see, I'm not a hundred percent on like, what is the Firefox Mozilla foundation? Exactly. What is what, but I do, I do genuinely wonder, you know, because no one's ever came back and hit me with this, uh, the need to have headquarters in Toronto, London, Paris, San Francisco, and Portland. Like physical locations, especially in a post, you know, work at home environment world that we're in right now. Especially with those cities, it's like, oh, expensive, 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 and probably expensive. <laughs> it's, I yeah, no. I don't know. I, I, again, <laughs> I can absolutely see the, it's like, yes, we need money and people will say, yes, they're doing this because they need money. Absolutely. This is not how you go about it. Uh, even if we are to assume, okay, they're not going to bend the knee to every scummy corporation willing to keep them afloat, just because that's probably what's going to happen. But this uh, this is just built-in native advertising with a behavioral model because it does the same thing that it used to do. It just gives you the suggestions like it used to of uh, sites you've been to, um, sites from your bookmarks, sites uh, or recommendations from the default search engine. Now it also includes the paid ads. I don't want to reward this kind of behavior. I don't, yeah. but I do like Thunderbird. I do like Thunderbird very much. So I'm not going to say, you know, stop using Firefox altogether because I do want there to keep getting developed, at least till someone else picks it up. Then, then we'll talk. Well, I know one thing that we learned last uh, <laughs> week before last when we went into the Firefox experiments and we all mm-hmm. found I'm like, wait, we're in some things I didn't know. I was, I was in three of them that I had. No idea. <laughs> Which isn't isn't strange, but the just you know, they've also been testing, you know, giving Bing search results mm-hmm. to like one percent of yeah. the audience. But mm-hmm. I, I think for me it, it does boil down to as I can make a lot I used to make a lot more excuses um for Firefox when they were doing like the crazy moonshot stuff, like just the experimental labs and this is one of the yeah. reasons I've never given <laughs> given Canonical a hard time because yeah, they've done some crazy sideways stuff, but you need that department and it's not, doesn't make fiscal sense to keep them around, but that's where like every now and then that really cool idea comes from. But yeah, Jill, what are are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I'm, you know, actually really sad about this. Um, Fortunately, Firefox is still the only open source web browser. So we can say that positively and we love Firefox and uh, but I'm going to be disabling contextual suggestions 
for sure in the future. And I think they need to be disabled by default and then allow people to turn those on if they want them. <laughs> and honestly, this reminds me of what Canonical implemented with the Amazon ser search shopping lens and Unity, which wasn't liked by the Linux community. Uh, that mm -hmm. wasn't liked either. And my idea is a simpler and respected way to monetize would be to ask for donations like Wikipedia does. And Wikipedia is doing right now. As soon as you go to their website, they ask, hey, please, can you donate five, ten dollars for us to stay alive and stay going, stay, you know, relevant. And I would happily do that. And I, and I do donate to the Mozilla Foundation. <laughs> so... There, there are Although, I guess the advertising ways to do model, that. Yeah, between those two, I guess the advertising model is the more profitable one. It's just that yeah, the profit is true. going to lead to yeah. less than above board suggestions. Mm -hmm. you, you never know. I mean, like what they're looking for is, you know, relying on donations, it, even a quarterly is not a terribly sustainable business model. It's just isn't. I wish it was. Um, but to answer, um, when is it, Fullerston? Yeah, this is North America only right now. They're not launching this in the EU, which also makes me go, hmm, GPR type <laughs> stuff. Uh, maybe. Um, something, regulations? No, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> something to keep eyes on. But <laughs> hey, I mean, you can disable it. So, and keep Firefox yeah. around. You know, I still use it where I can, Absolutely. where it makes sense. And um, everything else, you know, there, you can use Chromium. I mean, it exists. Does, Pedro, you would know this. Does KDE still have a web browser? <laughs> you can still install Conqueror, yes. Okay. Conqueror. It's one of my favorites. It's not the still. default anymore, but you can yeah. install it. Because I remember using that back in the day just for laughs. Like, let's see. Yeah. Whoa. All right. And now it has, uh, you just go into the options and you enable the ad blogger. It's like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Right on. So, uh, yeah. Chrome, everyone's favorite uh, data collecting vampire. <laughs> yeah. So, speaking of data collection, that we're to not worse. used to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Chrome web browser on Android is bringing back RSS. Kind of. Uh, what's cool is Google now lets you click a follow button and follow sites within its mobile browser, and you get contact. Content updates on sites you follow through Chrome on the on your new tab page. And actually, this works really well. And it is nice to have your own customized feed on your Google search tab along with Google's personalized search results. And um, it's actually really, really easy to enable. Um, it, it shows up in the hamburger. The follow button shows up in the hamburger menu on the stable version of Chrome for Android. But it's still rolling out, and you can manually enable it by by going to the URL Chrome Flags, uh, which is their settings, and search for Web Feed, and then s simply select Enabled. It's very easy. And what's really cool is then you can manage your follows by turning specific websites on or off. So if there's a lot of sites you've followed, like I've already followed about 50, and then I realized it went back, oh, I don't want to... Uh, follow that one right now it's easily to turn easy to turn it off and it's just a it's it's really nice because we haven't had uh, rss features in chrome in a very long time um we did at one time <laughs> so mm -hmm. Pedro, it's do, nice that they're Pedro, bringing do, these do back grab your PBR, get on your fixie put on some arcade fire and go subscribe to some rss feeds <laughs> like, not anymore no but no. i too was one of the people that when google you know relevant decided to kill reader you remember that <laughs> their aggregation service that collected all of your rss feeds if you so chose yeah they killed that mm -hmm. and now they're yeah. bringing that functionality to chrome i look forward to it being asked in <laughs> three years and angering a whole new sleuth of people oh come on yeah. when was the last <laughs> month oh boy google killed something <laughs> I remember Pedro There's entire back websites in, dedicated to that. <laughs> yeah. I remember going through the RSS uh, Google uh, feed reader and when it was all gone when it was done I'm like, "Oh man, I got to reset that up all again on another yeah, find service." Another, um, RSS <laughs> aggregator and uh, good luck. Yeah. See the trick yeah. is to have never relied on RSS feeds in the first place. Mm. Oh, no, 
I love them. <laughs> uh, well, you see, you enjoy having your emotions played with. I, on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I use services that I can export, you know, XML, export my RSS feed. Bypass and all that, just not using them. I, I never got into the, the <laughs> RSS, I guess, podcast, but as far as like news and stuff like that, even back in the day, like the precious that I was carrying around that was very guarded <laughs> was my bookmarks folder because yeah. that was my click hey there's all the news sources and I have that semi organized these days I mean, that's what the because you know you have like the super bar and you have whatever you have on it's called on Chrome just the URL bar I yeah. I have the first or the first two letters of every site that I normally visit you know it's probably like maybe 50 or 60 like okay do do enter do do enter you know, it's just that's a sour rule. I don't know. I'm not as cool as yeah, you know, RSS feeds. <laughs> <laughs> the one RSS thing that, you know, besides Reader, that really disappointed me was the KD built in one, the default plasmoid. Oh, that yeah. That allows you to, you mm -hmm. just drag and drop um, RSS feeds into it and it starts showing them to you. I had a significant collection and it's like, okay, I want to export them. You can't. Excuse you. Yeah, you can't export them. Oh, it's no. Just back so, in the yeah. KD 4.0 days. I want so it's like, yeah. okay, we're done. Here's what I want. I want somebody to go drop an RSS feed from a podcast and then see what it does. Yeah. It gives you the, the thumbnail if you set one and the titles. You've tried it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I used to have LGC as one of those. <laughs> in this new feature. In this. Yeah, I, the new one. I, I, I have. I did Linux game cast and got the LWW and LGC weekly links and uh yeah did it for several podcasts actually <laughs> there you go all right <laughs> let's talk about the most boring story we have this week and it's barely a story but hey we'll give it a mention is it linux mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so this is really cool something also th this is actually happy <laughs> so one of my favorite distros of all time Gets an update this week. Woohoo! So it's Debian GNU Linux 11.1 Bullseye has been released. And this is the first point release of the Bullseye series with 24 security updates and 75 bug fixes. And what's cool is these 99 updated packages make it so much easier to deploy the latest version of Debian on new machines because you don't have to download hundreds of updates after installation. And you can update your existing Debian Bullseye installs easily, just like all the previous uh, uh, Debian installs, or download the live and install ISOs. And I had a, actually a lot of fun with this. Pedro, tell me about your, your fun you had first. <laughs> I didn't have a whole lot of fun, yeah. to be honest, Jill. <laughs> oh, oh you did. I literally I, yeah, just, just like throw it out. Yeah, one, two, the, the middle one. There's three boxes to me. PC's under my right side here. But two of them were running 11. They were updated. They didn't blink. There's another box nice. under this corner of the desk uh, for the audio. Updated, no problem. Then we got the broadcast box over here. It updated and it rebooted. Everything worked. I think that was a total of maybe five minutes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I pulled the um, T42 and a half down from the shell. It's like, uh, <laughs> up, 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 ooh, there's a thing. Uh, run the full upgrade. It's like, oh, it changed version from 11 to 11.1. Oh, there we go then. Yeah. All right. Cool. Ooh, sweet. <laughs> Delightfully boring. That's what that's what Debian's about. Aww. That is our that is our motto. <laughs> yes. The good kind of boring. And that's why I run Debian. <laughs> Debian stable. <laughs> so I actually um, installed Debian 11.1, .1, the LXXDE um, ISO in a VM. And honestly, I have to admit, this is the first time that I have installed Debian using the GUI installer. And it is sweet. It's the Calamari's installer, and it's one of my favorite Linux installers. So it's honestly the first time I've always installed Debian well, with Jill, Lee. Well, it doesn't count. You and installed it with a VM. It doesn't count as an install. That's only 0.5 yeah, of an install. I know. I know. I <laughs> <was> very, <laughs> quick and dirty. Because I have lots of computers in here I need. I want to update, including my 486. I want to see how long it takes to install Bullseye on my 486. Or one of my 486s. <laughs> so, listen, Pedro. Some people have more time than others. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> sometimes I start questioning what I'm doing when I grab a laptop and it takes like five minutes to do a simple thing. It's like, 
maybe I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> yeah. See, I genuinely have thought about like getting like an Ultra 5 or an Ultra 10 out of my spare room. Oh, yes. I'm like, okay, kids, this is how you install. This is how we used to install Linux on them back in the day. Let me teach you about the open boot problem and all the moon commands on the keyboard. And I realized that, no, oh, I hate myself that much. Not going to happen. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, FX Boy Forever says we'll look forward to the results of that next month, Jill. <laughs> yeah, so true. <laughs> and I have about pro- uh, actually several hundred retro uh, computers with Debian installed on them. We get it, bro. But- you hoard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, <laughs> a problem I see constantly. Now, if you want to have fun time, <laughs> just set up a search on TweetDeck for like Linux Audio Discord. It never ends. This is a constant stream just running down with people going, man, I, there's no way. It's impossible. Discord, you need to fix uh, my inability to use Linux correctly. Come on, Discord. How come you haven't fixed my inability? That's not what they say, but that's what they really mean. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't know how to use Linux. <laughs> so they can't figure out how to get audio from screen sharing back into mm-hmm. the channel itself. And that's Discord's fault for them not understanding how to use the tool in front of them. Right, Pedro? Mm-hmm. I think somebody, <laughs> somebody's going to try to I file. Saw that, I saw that tweet too. It's like, oh, I wonder if Ben's going to say something. Well, I don't know if you're going to him, but Pedro, here it is. Pedro Mateus. That is one of 20 a day. <laughs> that one showed up on the Linux gaming. That's why I saw okay. it. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that was the taste. That is. <laughs> hey man, audio doesn't work on Linux. So yeah, I guess we go from the, uh, you know, the boring part of Linux to um, the the not so boring part, the the questionable yeah. part of Linux. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, as much as we mock Pulse Audio, has been basically that's how we started doing this, and it is very much in a usable state. But if you want to do something a bit more involved, like say setting up uh, virtual syncs or virtual sources, and then tying those virtual sources to a virtual sync that oh, you, you can just feed to PACMD? something else. PACMD. Yes, Sync. you could use PACMD like uh, everyone else does, or you go to Google, you type how to, then uh, it tells you how to, you do that, and then it goes, oh, there we go. But, but don't don't you just there kind of is. like <laughs> a grin sometimes, Pedro, when you open up uh, the graph manager and you're like, click, unclick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that jack does have its advantages. Well, we, we can't hear your pulsy yes. problems from our jack-powered ivory tower is yes. what I'm trying to communicate. <laughs> but with pulse meter, you actually have a GUI to create the virtual things and the virtual sources and then tie them together. You just point which one you want to go where and it's like, oh, oh, that's nice. Not actually having to learn the syntax for the CLI is very much appreciated. I've been screaming that we need more GUIs for everything, so I'm glad it's actually happening yeah. now. And um, I do have one request, though, because Pulse is all very well and good. Can we be sure this is going to work when, you know, Pipewire becomes the thing? Ah, see, you say that. That's up to Pipewire. If Pipewire works correctly, yeah. yes, it will. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, it would just be a drop-in replacement, uh-huh. and it would work. But please, <laughs> we, no. we've all been around long enough to know that that's not going to happen. I like seeing something like this, mainly because it uses the language of um, voice meter banana, yeah. or whatever it's called. from On Windows. And yeah. uh, that's going to yes. be searchable, and people are going to find it, which is fine. Um, because that allows like basic routing in Windows to get audio from one application to the other, which has been doable on Linux for 10 years plus. Years. Yeah, it's just <laughs> with, with Pulse Audio, with Jack, much longer. But, you yeah. know, it required typing, and that's over some people's heads. And Learning I, the syntax, yes. I'm giving people a hard time because some people are like, man, I just want this thing to do the thing. I also understand that, too. I understand that. But yeah. if you need to do some, you know, simple but slightly advanced routing, th- this is what it's here for, man, being able to create those syncs and the routes and it's got a nice GUI and most importantly you don't have to compile anything no warning you will have to open the terminal up but <laughs> but it's as simple as just a make install and it's going to drop everything yeah. that you need also for my brothers and sisters on arch check it out pyro as hey. <laughs> yes you are that's it yes <laughs> and if you're using that uh, yeah. bit about installing stuff from the aur from a few weeks back 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was actually looking forward to this because I know people that use a voice meter on Windows and um, uh, they add push to talk sound effects through their mics while playing games. And it's nice to have an easy option that's a GUI to do that. I mean, I use Jack now, but but it's 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 nice for the average user who needs to use Pulse. So it's great. <laughs> <laughs> A latency and like self monitoring and all that. Um, you know, like Pulse is not really good at that. Like Pulse latency. We, we were talking with a game developer in our Discord about like <laughs> dealing with Pulse mm. and like input latency for a rhythm game that they have. And, and how to measure it and how to actually do things, mm. especially if you have a rhythm game. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And His I, timing's I, everything. I was curious. I'm like, what, what's considered good? Not really, like, I've played DDR, that's about it. And, um, like, 50 milliseconds was considered optimal, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Pulse might be able to pull it off. <laughs> might. <laughs> the only game that I ever tried that uh, was the one I mentioned uh, is, like, yeah, uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer. It actually asks you, as you started, to, like, okay, hit mm. up along with the beat so we can measure what the latency is. And it said, like, oh, you have 21 milliseconds latency. Okay, I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> well, one, of the, one of the fun things, I didn't have the heart to bring that into the conversation, was every time you plug and unplug one of your USB uh, audio decks, uh, you're going to get a different latency reading. Mm -hmm. Isn't that supposed to be fixed with 515? <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for the upcoming interfacing <laughs> Linux spoilers. Aww. Um, <laughs> so then at least we don't have to worry about the days of OS or or e sound. <laughs> hey. OS that's worked. I mean I love I, I still use OS with Winamp. <laughs> the um, or, or XMMS. At the end of the day, I, I try to like everything's using also <laughs> at the end of the day. It all boils yeah, down to also. True. And there there's still people out there in twenty twenty one that I've been asked these questions, but how do I do this directly with Alsa? You don't. Mm -hmm. LGC cares. That's no. why the abstraction exists. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't. Yeah. <laughs> Ubuntu, not fame, but frame. Yeah. So Ubuntu has been framed. Woohoo. So, but no, really, <laughs> Ubuntu frame is an uh, Ubuntu Linux distro for the Internet of Things, but more specifically aimed at digital signage and kiosks. So Ubuntu Frame makes it easy to build and deploy graphical applica applications for interactive kiosks, digital signage, or any other products, you know, that require a graphical output. And it also comes with an integrated uh, direct rendering manager, or DRM, and kernel mode settings, KMS, to backup displays. And this is wonderful. You know, Ubuntu already has the Ubuntu Core Linux, which um, is also used for Internet of Things pro projects, but this is specifically aimed for signage and all things that are visual. So, and it, they were both they both will be supported for ten years, which is awesome. LTS. That, that that's <laughs> uh, like for an underlying operating system. I, I mean, I guess I get it, but like, there's some really good robust signage applications that have been around for a long time for a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, that work work well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With a lot less overhead. Yeah. Than you said. Yeah. <laughs> but you know it's... what? Because cuz uh Ubuntu uh frame uses snaps, it's easy to upgrade. And also requires software. more resources. A lot less overhead. It's... <laughs> yes, I know. I know what I said. <laughs> something I'm saying something positive <laughs> for snaps. <laughs> <laughs> but you, uh, there's no such thing. Uh, snaps, snaps make sense <laughs> as long as it's not. I don't know. They exist. Snaps. Um, hire me for yes, marketing. They, they exist. It's like apples <laughs> from <laughs> Rick and Morty. Snaps. Aww. They exist. Well, there's you know so many users that are using you know Ubuntu. So this this makes sense. So you have your Debian option with the Raspberry Pi, and now you have. Your Ubuntu option. And don't think you're safe, Fedora. I'm going to be jumping on flat packs <laughs> Saturday. So, 
Yeah, no, that went exactly <laughs> as, as, as I expected it would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I put that link in the show notes, I was reading the articles like, oh, Ven's going to like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I was rocking and rolling until I got towards the bottom and went, nope. That's where, that's where, that's where Ven Tech support ends right there. It's like, correct that. <laughs> but yeah, um, no. well, yeah well, again you're, you're also talking about the same magazine that told people to install a full rt kernel on their desktop mm-hmm. and i'm like oh yes and wonder where your <laughs> video they're slowly yeah, learning yeah, because that was the only egregious bit that i could find in that okay. article so <laughs> <gasps> pedro why <laughs> how does this even begin you look at your calculator and you're like nah man i, I gotta fight the man i can't run the man's os on my calculator you look at your calculator and you go, this is too simple, too intuitive, too everything. I want this. I want to use it as a computer that only works correctly sometimes. <laughs> well, I, I I don't actually know because the, uh, the one Texas instrument calculator with a Z80 processor uh, that I had is in Portugal. Last I heard from it, my little brother mm-hmm. was uh, using it for university. He's finished university now, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, Night OS. It's a operating system, Unix-like operating system, not Linux specifically, uh, but certainly very, very neat, and it runs on your Z80-based uh, TI calculators, like the uh, TI-73, the TI-83+, plus silver edition the 84 84 plus yeah it's that's the 84 uh plus is the one i had uh and it is yeah it it it's an operating system it's a (laughs) full-blown operating system for your texas instrument calculator i that's that's amazing uh yeah See, and you, and you thought, you thought <laughs> yeah. you, you were do, achieving like peak edge of the world playing video games on Linux, man. Some people you don't even register it on. I'm like, no, <laughs> that's way too mainstream. <laughs> I use my Texas instruments. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> well, my TI 30 from the 70s is, is too old for 99 OS. <laughs> Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think for a lot of us, um, some like slightly more advanced, uh, like programs that we learned to play around with was with programming our TIs back in the day, you know, playing games mm-hmm. and class and stuff like that, making them do things they absolutely were not supposed to do. I know for me, it was, uh, you know, it's something to play around with. So I, I like something like this existing. Also, I still find it incredibly yes. impressive that those calculators were. 30 years ago, 70 pounds. And if you go to buy one today, still 70 oh, pounds. 70 pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. Are, they went up in price. Even the Casio graphic calculator that I had for... Oh, um, yeah. They were like over 100 I was, now. <laughs> yeah. When I was yeah. in um, like 10th grade that I got it, uh, they, were, they weren't they were cheap, cheap. They were like 50 euros, which at the time was significant. Uh, and now they're... Uh, easily three times that if you go looking for one of them so no yeah <laughs> no <laughs> yeah i'm i'm gonna actually uh pick up a, a more modern graphing calculator because i have all the uh, vintage texas in- instruments calculators and so i i really want one of the z80 80 chips so i can you know p- play with this os um i have put doom and mario and tetris on one of my old calculators. Oh, yeah. I, I did run Doom on the nice. Casio just yeah. because I had to. It's like, okay, can I yeah. do this? I just follow the thing. <laughs> I can. Neat. <laughs> but you had to be like a normal person and run your TI emulator in your um, 3DS. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> success. <laughs> so, uh, good news, everyone. Good news. Uh, this is our favorite segment. Microsoft, Microsoft loves, loves Linux. Linux. The best part of Windows 11, according to Ars Technica, is the revamped Windows subsystem for Linux. It's finally easy to install because previously it required <laughs> being above room temperature and possibly a pulse. Microsoft has <laughs> helped out. You know, they filed it down a little more. Um, and it offers automatic sound and graphic support. Look at it. It's so blurry. Aw. Um, so what do we get? Well... One, it is easier to install. They put it in the Microsoft App Store because, hey, you don't have to worry about 
typing things. You don't have to open one of those big spooky terminals. And I guess that's going to help some other people out. And a couple of, uh, you know, no further arguments you need to, you just get the hyper, you can do WSL install if you want to do it that way. Uh, you can get a current version of Ubuntu and I think there's some other stuff floating around in there. And, um, you can install a second distribution on top of your first mm-hmm. one. It's not going to uninstall it now. That's pretty neat. Graphics supports the big story though. And, um, sound and sound and graphics. So you're going to get Wayland. I don't know what they're going to be using on the back end for audio. I'm assuming Pipewire, it might be Pulse Audio, but apparently it does work. I've seen multiple people report on Twitter mm. that, ha, I have sound running in Linux and Windows. It's so, <laughs> well, they made it simple enough. So you're it. saying the meme is going away. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're they're going to get very disappointed, man. Um, I, I, I guess good, good on you, Redmond. I mean, you, you've nerfed it to the point to where uh, Windows users can make audio work under Linux. Yeah. <laughs> When those users get to experience what everyone else using Linux has figured out a long time ago. But hey, welcome. Took you long <laughs> enough. You can get a ZFS up and running on it. Um, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I don't understand. Mm. I haven't been sold. On, I don't have Windows to have a neat. No, I could understand if I was stuck in a Windows environment at work or something like that. And yeah. I couldn't get to go ahead to install Linux, but they're like, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm like, done. But outside yeah, of that. Definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, a, a cool thing that happened this morning is that Microsoft made the announcement that they're making it easier to install WSL through their software center now. So that's a first that just mm-hmm. landed this morning. And, um, but what's, what's cool is, you know, the best thing about Windows 11 is Linux, <laughs> says J- Jim Salter. And this actually doesn't surprise me a bit. <laughs> so, but you, you still need bare metal Linux to run a LAMP or a LAMP server to communicate with other systems on the network. WSL hasn't, hasn't reached that point yet, but it, it probably will in the future. And what I like is, is Jim Salter in the article sums it up nicely and states that Windows subsystem for Linux G in Windows 11 eliminates a lot of pain points for fellow Linux users trapped in Windows land at work, as Ven was saying, as well as offering the easiest way possible for newbies to get their feet wet and try new things. Mm -hmm. So I thought he summed it up very nicely there. (laughs) Maybe Microsoft's going to be the one to make uh, (laughs) Linux user friendly. And I don't like using the term user friendly because I find yeah. Linux to be perfectly user friendly. Then again, I find HP UX to be perfectly user. Solaris could take a minute to figure out, but <laughs> um, I, I well, you have user friendly or uh, people who claim they're user friendly, and then they go out of their way to be as unfriendly as possible. I think at the end of the day, yeah. it boils down to a very. This is this is my analogy, and I'm not going to use cars. I'm going to use video game controllers. <laughs> you, you have the two types. You have the person who's playing the game like, ah, man, I got to get better. This is, I, I got to work. I got to learn some new stuff. I got to improve my game. And then you get the person's like, this controller's broken. <laughs> is that accurate <laughs> enough for everyone? Yeah. <laughs> That's how I see people yeah. coming at Linux. They're like, "Oh man, I got, I got to reset my skill set. I got to learn some new thing." And that that that's when you're supposed to get excited. You're like, "Oh yes, new stuff to play with. Let's do it." And like, "Oh, I got to do some weird Learning hacker things." No, some no, people no, are no, no, no. <laughs> You have to hey, learn hey, some ben weird is- lo- <laughs> hacker things that you got to do and to get something to get set up. And I, I've seen somebody say this, like, "Ah, oh, it's maybe if I did some of that cryptic stuff." To which I retort, oh, you mean learn how to use the operating system? Oh. <laughs> then if you install Rat Poison to say as a window but... <laughs> manager, <laughs> then you could, you could scare them away from Linux. <laughs> well, I mean, you would scare anybody away who was trying to be productive. Yeah. No, actually, I'm quite productive in Rat Poison. <laughs> <laughs> sure you are so hey <laughs> if you want to support what we do you can do that becoming a patron over patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast that's where you lovely miscreants uh can get some cool stuff rewards we get a bonus show that we put out each and every week access to our discord 
and a couple other behind the scene things. If you're curious about audio stuff, I do that series interfacing Linux. Somebody's got to do it. You're going to be getting a sneak peek, uh, some number digits and everything that I go through with that. Also, if you like these shows, there's a lot more for them, man. There's a beginning and an end. We call it the pre-pre-super shows and on Saturday, an hour beforehand, but we make available live and uncut series in podcast format and video for patrons for helping us out. But as always, live streams are always going to be completely free. We have IRC. It's even tied into our live chat. So Discord, IRC, and Twitch cool. can chat with each other anytime they want and stick around for your name in the credits because that's how we kind of thank you. There's a wall back here. I'm not going to tell you how you end up on it because I'm running out of room. Also, <laughs> Pedro and Jill, they got like a little wish list. If you want to buy them trinkets and make yeah. them talk, you know, you're sitting yes. around, you're like, man, I need some <laughs> new things for a voice text message. Hmm. I'm going to, here you go. And they'll read it out. You can record it and uh, terrorize your local neighborhood with a loudspeaker. Don't I actually went through my wish list and I sorted everything that was like reasonably priced. I sorted that by, uh, you know, price. So yeah, that's get what I do early. too, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck to everyone. Now, <laughs> let's start with some cinematic pie. Yeah, <gasps> ultra wide. Some metal pie. Well, that, uh, uh, it's kind of like cherry um, pie. I don't know. It's either that, okay, it's cherry pie or it's or a bowl of berry. oatmeal that's bleeding. That's, uh, the, the, it's got raspberry. some crumb on top, but uh, yeah, it could be raspberry or, mm, it's a little yeah. too red for blueberry. I mean, it could be plastic. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the plate underneath <laughs> is. <laughs> so, but yeah. Pedro, have you ever looked at your raspberry pie? We were talking about overhead and you're like, operating system. Mm-hmm. That's, it's a little too much overhead for old Mateus. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, there's a bunch of crazy people out there that are actually trying to make something run directly on the metal or the silicon, however you want progress. to describe it. We've talked about this before, yes. but it's a thing now. Yep, it is very much a thing. So this isn't firmware-ish, uh, but it is a bare metal operating system. And... It is, it, it's not purely the bare metal in the sense that typical firmware is because it's not running on the individual components, but it is uh, for the Raspberry Pi, the, the whole um, single board computer itself. So it's kind of like that. But yeah, no, these kinds of projects and uh, our Pi 4 OS dev is very much one of them. Uh, they very rarely get any kind of attention until they hit that one very neat thing that everyone goes, oh, we want that. Or it's like mm-hmm. massive performance gains that actually comes uh, downstream to other projects. Like, oh, where did that come from? Yeah, that I, I want people playing around with this and actually finding new stuff about this one's for the Pi 4. Uh, actually find interesting new things for the pie to do with the pie with as little overhead as possible. You're not going to get it with this, man. Come on. The this, this thing's 93% <laughs> C and I don't care what you say, but then C is just assembly with comments. <laughs> well, there's some assembly there too. 3.3%. Yes. I am kind of fascinated by the origin story of this. Uh, the creator writes, Hey man, I'm a tech CEO at real VNC. I don't write code anymore. And I recently realized how much I missed it. <laughs> and nerd <laughs> this this is definitely a byproduct of lockdown it's like oh, all right so i'm going to try to write a close to bare metal system for the raspberry right on 100% behind that yeah this tutorial actually is really well written written and seems easier and a lot less tedious than you know following the linux from scratch instructions that i did years ago <laughs> like, <laughs> It does seem a lot, but this is a great way to learn <laughs> bare metal OS. <laughs> well, yeah, no, they even got uh, Bluetooth low energy working. It's yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. <laughs> so will it make my stream deck faster? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're going to have to do it yourself, but uh, possibly. I don't know. Like if I can get a lamp stack up and running on it, we're good. <laughs> yeah. AirPi Play. Do you have any um, AirPlay type stuff? Anybody in their houses? I don't have any AirPlay stuff. I don't. 
Apple devices. Do you have any? Uh, I got Soto speakers. <laughs> Those cost as much as Apple devices. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I have lots of Apple devices, but I don't use AirPlay. <laughs> Probably a sensible decision, but if you <laughs> did and you wanted to try, uh, you know, mirroring it to or using a Linux device to mirror uh, or serve as an, an AirPlay server. Well, there were a couple of other projects. We covered one that only did sound um, a while back, which was uh, Go Play 2. I think that was the name. Mm. And uh, now we have um, AirPi Play which is by itself it doesn't do anything because uh, i found it a bit weird when i saw the uh, the languages bit thank you github that was very much appreciated the languages bit down the side's like oh it's all shell script right what <laughs> there's nothing else how did you do all of that in shells ah okay so this is just a front end for our pi play which is the actual server software uh that this uh is basically a bash script that acts as a CLI that just provides a bunch of variables that you can set the name of the um, the Pi server uh, for that it shows up in the AirPlay stuff. You can set whether you want, where you want audio to go out of, be it HDMI, analog, not at all. Uh, do you want it to play in the background? Do you want uh, it to... Um, Enable low latency mode. Do you want like rotation for like 90 degrees or do you want image flip as in to actually flip the picture that's being displayed? Because yes, our Pi Play doesn't just do sound. It does video too, which is important. That's very important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so th this combination seems to be the way to go if you're playing with the AirPlay stuff on, um, on Linux. I mean, I... <sighs> In a strange way, I got to appreciate it. I would never think to um, bring an iDevice to a Linux party. It's just... Uh... <laughs> That's how you get mocked. <laughs> Unless you say, no, 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 no. Pedro. See, this is running Linux. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I was about to say, man, I wrote Linux on it. Look, I got a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it is cool that it's, you know, you can launch it with the Bolano, uh, Bolana cloud fleet. Uh, Blana Etcher is the the app I use to. Uh, okay, I'm going to give you one ISO. more chance to say that name correctly, Jill. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying it right. So, Bolina. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you had three chances on your own. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bolina. Bolina Etcher is the. Uh, yeah. ISO, yes, uh, it is developed <laughs> by the uh, Bolina people and Bolina Cloud. Is, that's a service that I didn't no oh was yeah a thing. it's huge it's huge with yeah. the you know raspberry pi too uh they have lots of projects for the raspberry pi i've gone through some of them they're really good what what, what is that people like is that docker for pi basically what's going on there yes it's kind a of, different yeah. kind of docker <laughs> it's like a software center for pi yes with uh yeah that'll let you do you know lots of things um like make but if you are one of the docker people there's a Docker Compose and a Docker template on it, so you can just point it at them, and away you go. <laughs> can I install Docker with a snap? <laughs> probably. Yeah. And Pedro, probably. okay. Now, listen, winter's coming. I'm trying to generate heat here. So. We're running out of time, everyone. We got to get out of here. Hey, if you want to get hold to of, uh, any of us, really, just head over to our uh, web zone, linuxteamcast.com, smash that contact button, fill out the forum, select the right show. This one happens to be LWDW. And we'll get back to it. We might even read your question, comment, hint, thought, allegation right here on this very show. But that's going to do it for episode 296. We got to pull up some music and roll them credits. <gasps> Here it comes. Awesome. <laughs> Aww. Well, we have some new people in chat, too. Deep uh, yes, to uh, deep. <laughs> I like that name. Deep to deep. <laughs> and um, yeah. RWX yes. Rob. And yeah. let's see. Silent uh, Procyon. And we got Steve. Steve watches the whole boring <laughs> thing, but Jill's like, man, I ain't got time Steve's, to watch uh, your boring Steve's stuff, biased. Steve. Oh, yeah. He's biased because his wife is on the show. 
<laughs> Doesn't sound like a balanced relationship to me, buddy. <laughs> Well, thank you, everyone in chat. X boy forever, FX boy, F X boy forever, FX boy forever. <laughs> Sorry, FX boy, <laughs> I messed that one up. Arthur, we'll of see course. See you next week, everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>